morning Antioch Church Embrace. Today is Tuesday, December 13th. Let's pray before we start our devotions. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the creator and that um, even though we go through peaks and valleys, that you are the God who is in control, a God who looks at us, a God who loves us, a God who is with us. We know this especially because Christ was born. Help us today to reflect on our lives and what really matters. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, today's passage is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. And I'll read that for us. There was a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will, f will fear him. Whatever is has already been and what will be has been before and God will call the past to account. <clears throat> So this is a pretty famous uh, passage. I, I think it's easy to separate verses uh, 1 to 8. And you have these um, couplets, uh, contrasting couplets. And I always think of that song. Um, and I think it's from the Beatles. I can't remember. <laughs> I could be wrong. Um, but um, just a very poetic uh, passage where we have these contrasting events where the the teacher says that there's a time for everything in essence good and bad um, and I think we all we all see that in our own experience that there is a time to weep and a time to laugh uh, you know I think we all experience that just using that as a specific example um, and just just a very interesting passage and passage to think about um, all these contrasts. And um, let's kind of now look at verses 9 to 15. And we kind of, he's kind of now the teacher is talking about um, what does this all mean? And I just like to highlight verse 11. I, I kind of reflect on, on this that. He says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Um, and I hope that for those of us who are struggling or insecure about who we are or identity, uh, remember that God gives us this promise that he has made everything beautiful in his time. And this even refers to us. I mean, there are many times in our lives when we definitely don't feel beautiful. We see our sin. We see our shortcomings. We see our mistakes. There are things that we're embarrassed about, ashamed of. Uh, but God says he has made everything beautiful in its time, and that includes us. He goes on and says he has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. And I find this interesting in the sense that, yes, we know that we're made in God's image and that we have eternity in our hearts we're meant to ponder these things we're meant to ponder life and death why is there uh, weeping and why is there laughing why is there mourning and why is there dancing why is there 
a time to tear and a time to mend. We are meant to ponder these things, and God himself has put it in our hearts. And I find uh, what's interesting in verse 12 and 13, he kind of gives us some more advice, and he says, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. In a way, he almost tells us, what we should do, how we should live, is we should be happy. We should do good while we live. Um, we should eat and drink. We should find satisfaction in our toil. And I find it interesting, previously in the Living Life passage, in their analysis, their interpretation, they say, the ability to enjoy the work that we do is a gift from God. Um, so we should find satisfaction in our toil. And we should ask God to give us that satisfaction. Um, and I kind of find 12 and 13 interesting in that this is some of the advice that he gives us and it's I think it's something that we can take to heart with the Bible as a whole but that he calls us to be happy to do good while we live to eat and drink and find satisfaction in all our toil and ultimately he ends it with verses 14 and 15 and basically he knows that God is eternal what God's will will be done that God will reign and that God is in control and I think that's a good message to kind of reflect on and to end on that even though there's the good and the bad happening even though we don't fully understand how to live or what we should do to remember that everything God does will endure forever nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it uh, and just to reflect on God being in control and that God is all powerful and God's will, it will be done and to have hope ultimately in that. So let's end with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that in all our struggles in life, the good and the bad, the positive and the negative, the peaks and the valleys, that you are the one thing that does not change and remains eternal. And we know, Lord, that your will, it will be done. Help us to hold on to that truth, to turn to you and ask for you to be with us and give us uh, satisfaction in our work that we're doing here on this earth and, and that we may bring you glory and honor. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone.